Hey guys, it's Steve from Featherlight. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked all about the brand new updates in Cubase 11. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the thing that I get asked about maybe the most where Cubase is concerned, and that is tempo detection. In this episode, we're going to get Cubase not just to understand the tempo of a song or even a multi-track file performance that you're trying to import, but then when you're finished, to get it to play to a completely different tempo. Let's get started. All right, so here we are at the beginning of our basic project. We've got four basic audio tracks here. We're going to call the first one bed track. And then we need to import the audio into our first track. So we're going to come up here to file and we're going to navigate down to import. And here we're going to navigate to the file that we want to import. So we hit the name of the song, we open it up and we get the import options dialog box. This is the box that allows us to change the sample rate and the bit depth and things like that. For the time being, we're simply going to leave it at its defaults and we're going to leave copy file to project folder ticked as well. We want to make sure that everything with this project ends up in one place. When we hit OK, the import takes place. And then as we can see, we have quite a bit of space at the beginning of the clip itself. If we zoom in, we can see it a little better. Let's take a listen to what sounds like the tempo. All right, so as we can tell with the click engaged, it's not even close at the project's default of 120 beats a minute. So we wanna find out what that tempo is gonna be. First thing we're gonna do is come up and disable the grid selection. That allows us to edit freely. So we're going to move this all the way over to the very beginning of the wave. This is maybe the most important part of all of the methods I'm going to show you here. And that's just to make sure that there's no additional space at the beginning, which is going to make detecting the tempo a lot harder. Once we get the edit where we need, we simply come up and re-engage grid and grab and drag the wave back to the beginning. But with snap on, it makes sure that it actually snaps to the very beginning of the song at bar one at sample start zero. And that's really important where the tempo detection part is concerned. With our imported song on track one, when we play back the beat, we really need to start by finding a part of the song that has an identifiable downbeat or drum beat to it. Right here is pretty ambiguous. So what we need to do is navigate a little further into the song and then find a beat that we can at least start to work with here. All right, so right here at the start of bar 11, we have the beginning of our downbeat for a kick. And then right there at about maybe halfway or a little more past bar 14, we have the end of our pattern. Let's make that the part we're gonna detect. And if we right click to our range select tool and just stick it right about the beginning of that drum beat, and then we select all the way over to that drum beat over here. This ends up being about two bars in four, four time signature. And we know that if we count through it. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So we have a two bar pattern. Each bar has four beats inside of it. Add the bars together and you get eight total beats. And we can use that to calculate the beat or the tempo of the song by coming up here to the project, navigating down to beat calculator. And once we know the total amount of beats in our current audio selection, which in our case is eight, we simply enter that into the beats field here and we can see our tempo is 70 beats per minute. So if we come down here to our project tempo, if we go all the way back to the beginning of the project and we reset this at 70, we we should be pretty close to the ballpark. Let's engage our click track so we can hear what's going on. And then here comes the start of the drum track. All right, and as you can hear, that's pretty close. Now, if we go all the way to the end of the actual song itself, the problem with this method is that if this wasn't done with electronic music, meaning it wasn't done on a DAW or on a beat creation machine or an MPC, and there are fluctuations in the tempo, this could fluctuate over time. But if we get towards the end of the song here, we can check and see how close it's drifted or if it's drifted at all. <laughs> All 
right, so you can hear that's really, really close to being on. In fact, it's just about dead on because it hasn't drifted at all. The second method we're going to learn about is called tempo detection. Now, a lot of DAWs have a similar feature to this, but the one in Cubase is really quite good. And in addition to simply trying to determine what the beat is, like with Beat Calculator, tempo detection gives us a couple of additional tools that are going to come in really handy later. So first thing we do, like we did before, is we select the wave. We go all the way to the beginning of the start of the wave. We expand it all the way out and make sure that we are starting at the very beginning of the wave itself and not chopping off anything either. We want to make sure that we're not cutting part of the wave off. We just want to make sure that we're starting at the very beginning of the wave. And if need be, we can re-engage snap, click and drag the wave back to its bar one start position. And now we're going to be using the tempo detection feature. So with the clip selected, we're going to go up to Cubase, come up to project and navigate down to tempo detection. And it's going to do a couple things. It's going to open a little floating box here. It probably starts up in the left-hand corner, so you might have to drag it down into view depending on your screen size. And it's going to give us the tempo detection options box. There's a, quite a few different things to choose from here, but the first of which is the analyze button. So we're going to click that and let it do its thing. It's going to analyze the entire wave shape. And when it's done, it's going to create a tempo track down here, and it's going to create a signature track, a time signature track. In addition to automatically selecting the time warp tool, which puts us into time warping mode. So we're going to grab the tempo track and we're going to move it up right underneath our time signature track here. And it's also created tempo markers or flags for each one of the tempo events that have been created in our tempo track. These tempo markers will actually allow us to go back in a future video and edit the tempo decisions Cubase has made for us. But for now, if we just start playback and we engage our click track, We can hear that our metronome is in time, but it's going twice as fast for our song that's in a 4-4 time signature. If we want each one of the downbeats in our bar to only have one metronome click, then we need to get rid of roughly half of our overall timing markers. We can do this by going into the options box. We're going to divide by two, and then it's going to reset all that information. It's going to sound like this. All right, and as you can hear, if we look down here in our tempo box, we're really close to 70 beats a minute. But you'll notice that instead of just a static 70 beats a minute, we actually have a whole bunch of tempo information here. It's constantly changing tempo every beat. And this is pretty typical of tempo detection algorithms because even though it's imperceivable to your ear, these are so close to 70 beats a minute, it's gonna make a tempo detection choice or decision every single beat. All right, so from here, we need to do a couple of things to make sure that that tempo information is remembered correctly. And to do that, we simply right click and choose any other tool other than the time warp tool we're currently using. And when we do, Cubase simply notifies us that we'll be ending this particular tempo detection session. We click continue to end the session. It takes us back to our project view where we have one more thing left to do before we can write these tempo changes into the project. If we look up here onto our time signature track, we can see that our tempo information, or in this case, our click track, is still set to 1-4, which means instead of having four beats per bar, we just have one quarter beat. So we need to make this 4-4. Four, four. We can change our time signature track. So currently right now, if we listen to the click, it's all the same pitch because Cubase right now doesn't understand that it has more than one beat in the bar. If we double click on this and simply enter four slash four, now we've changed it to four four time instead of one four time. Now listen to the click, how it's changed. This is an important step because Cubase now understands where the downbeat of bar one should actually start. And by changing the time signature to 4-4 four, four instead of 1-4, it now understands there's four beats inside of that bar. Now it's time to take all this tempo information that we've created and write it into memory, which is going to do a couple of things. The most important of which is it's going to free us from using this tempo track 
with all of that tempo information and allow us to use one static tempo instead. To do that, we're gonna click onto our wave to make sure it's selected. We're gonna come up here to audio, navigate down to advanced, and now we're gonna choose set definition from tempo. This opens up the dialog box and a couple of things are at play here. Our first choice is to save definition into the project only. That's the one we're gonna choose, although we can also choose to write it to the audio file itself, but that's for a more specific purpose we'll deal with later. And the second choice is to set all tracks to a musical time base. This is very important because it adds a couple of different additional features that weren't possible when we just detected the tempo by itself. Now that our settings have been saved, we can deactivate our tempo track that included all of those tempo detection changes and choose any static tempo we like. So for example, if we choose 65 beats per minute, let's try changing this to 80 beats per minute. Now that our tempo changes have been saved and our audio has been converted to musical mode, Cubase will expand and contract our clip to any static tempo that we choose now. This opens up a huge amount of possibility creatively and compositionally by adding to this particular project. And then when we're done, shrinking or expanding it or trying out different tempo ideas without having to worry about the music falling apart. We could come over to our media bay and grab any of the grooves that are in it and simply drag and drop into our project at sample start. And it's gonna sync dutifully along to the tempo that we've created down here. At current, it's the correct tempo at 70 beats per minute. Let's play it back and hear what it sounds like. The ability to grab anything from the media band, drop it into the project at the correct tempo, coupled with the fact that the algorithm used to do it is incredibly clean with no obvious artifacts makes this a real powerhouse feature set. The same technique using tempo detection can also be used for multi-track files. Here we have a multi-track drum recording. And if we engage the click track, As you can hear, it isn't even close, so for the time being, we're gonna go ahead and disengage the click track. Also, all these tracks are currently in a folder, which makes editing multi-track information a lot easier to do, as any edits done to one will affect all the other clips in the folder. However, we need to access one of the audio tracks independently from the group, so for the time being, we're gonna disengage the group editing button, and that will allow us to use one of the audio tracks by itself as our tempo detection guide track. So we're gonna start the same way we did in our two-track example with one important an exception, we're going to expand the wave and deliberately trim the beginning of it so that it doesn't start on the downbeat, but instead the hi-hat part before it to help illustrate what to do with a song that may have a pickup note in it. Then we're going to engage our snap again, and that's going to allow us to take all of these tracks and move them to the very beginning or start of our project. And now we're gonna select just one of the tracks. We're gonna select one of the overhead tracks as our tempo detection guide track. We're gonna go up here to project, do the same thing we did with our stereo track. We're gonna choose tempo detection. And now when we hit the analyze button, it's gonna go through and do the same thing it did before. Cubase is gonna create our time signature track, our time warp tempo markers, and our tempo track. For convenience sake, we're gonna move these directly underneath our folder so we can see them more clearly. Let's play it back with our click track and hear what we have. All right, so Cubase has accurately detected the tempo of that performance, but as you can hear, just like before, that it doesn't know the difference between the start of the bar lines. Currently right now, because the click track is all the same pitch, it thinks that every beat is simply a downbeat. And just like before, it's because it chooses a default time signature of 1-4. To fix that, we're going to right-click on our toolbar and select any other tool that's going to end our tempo session. We simply click Continue to Agree, and then come up to our time signature track here to make our changes. On this particular recording, the music doesn't start on the downbeat, so we need to make Cubase aware of where exactly the very first downbeat bar begins. All right, so right there is the start of our kick drum, and that's where we want the first bar to start. So we're gonna select our pencil tool and come up to the signature track, and we're gonna draw in a new event, and that's gonna be a 4-4 time signature. Now, when we play it back, listen to the click track.
All right, you can tell by the high and low pitches that now Cubase understands that the beginning of our actual downbeat or bar starts right here in this area and not at the very beginning of the actual drum recording itself. And now it's time to write these changes into our Cubase project. We can do the same thing we did before. We're gonna group select all of our tracks here. We're gonna come up to audio. We're gonna come down to advanced and we're gonna choose the same thing we did before, set definition from tempo. We're gonna choose the default and save definition with the project only. And we're also gonna do the second step. We're gonna make sure this box is ticked. It's gonna set all the tracks to a musical time base. By doing so, you'll see these little squiggly lines here and that little quarter note. And that indicates that each one of these tracks are now in musical mode and will follow whatever project tempo we set. So now, even if we deactivate the tempo track, now it's back to our project default of 120. Now all the same things that apply to our two-track stereo file apply to our multi-track stereo file as well. We can set a static tempo down here, and we could even drag things in from the media bay or audition them without even having to drag them in. Let's pick something out of the hip-hop vault. We'll make sure that wait for play is engaged and start our playback. You can even add musical ideas. So there's a quick look at three different methods to detect the tempo of your audio in Cubase Pro. And coming up in the next video, we're gonna learn how to detect performances that have fluctuating tempos using the Cubase Time Warp tool.